My name is Channa. My name is Channa. And then I'm from Nanaska. We are from Nanaska. So now uh, we are trying to kind of work with you together on this program called Strategic Level Case Study. We are trying to work on this program called Strategic Level Case Study. So let me give you a brief about how things will work. Now, there is a pre-scene given by Seema. There is a pre-scene given by Seema. We got to be familiar with the pre-scene. Now, why? Because on the exam day, all the questions will be given based on this pre-scene. Exam day, all the questions will be given based on the pre-scene. So, therefore, we have enough time that we need to be familiar with this precinct. We need to be familiar with this precinct. So now, when we try to be familiar with the precinct, of course, there is a document given by SEMA. But other than that, the SEMA document might be a little bit boring. Therefore, we will give you an easier way to study the document. The, the, what we are going to give you is called KYP, Know Your Precinct. So KYP stand for know your pricey. KYP stand for know your pricey. So we will share that KYP document with you. KYP is a version coming from Nanaska. Your life is easier when you go through the KYP because it's a nicer presentation, more user friendly document. Whatever given in the pre scene is explained better in the KYP. We have given you a few examples for you to understand it. With the pictures, it's a nicer document for you to go through. But you can't learn about a company. You can't learn about the pre-scene. KYP is not good enough. You can't learn about it unless you learn about the industry as well. You got to learn about the industry as well. That is why we have what we call KYI. KYI stand for Know Your Industry. KYI stand for Know Your Industry. So both these documents are important. Both these documents are the starting point of our session. KYP, KYI. There are 10 steps in our course. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 steps in our course. In the 10 steps that is available within the course, in the 10 steps that is available within the course, the first two steps are called KYP and KYI. So that is where we are going to start the work. Now, before I show you the KYP and KYI, you got to know what this pre-scene is all about. <coughs> you got to know what this pre-scene is all about. So this is... Sorry, there was a small issue. There was a small issue. We got stuck. Very sorry. But we'll start from where we were discussing about, right? I hope now you can see me and hear me. I hope now you can see me and hear me. So I'll start from where we start, right? So basically, basically, the, there is a pre-scene given by Seema this time. The pre-scene given by Seema this time is called, a company called Snack Wheel. 
It's a company called Snackville. This is a very interesting organization. This is the strategic level case study for the May exams and the August exams of uh, 2022. Right, so we have enough time to go through the work. But I'm not trying to teach you the pre-scene today because today is only introductory session, but I will give you uh, some idea about it. So trust me, this is a very interesting industry because let me tell you what we do. We are a fast food, sorry, we are a food delivery business. We are a food delivery business. So we are like Uber. Simply put in, we are like Uber. We deliver food for you. We deliver food for you. That is what we do. Now, the difference between Uber and us. Look at Uber. Uber business model is simple, right? Uber business model is simple. You know how Uber makes money. So Uber is there and they are kind of like an IT company. They have connected various restaurants with Uber and many people will download the Uber app. Many people will download the Uber app and the Uber is connected to various different restaurants. So whenever you order food from the Uber app, let's say the cost is $100, the marked price of the product is $100, marked price of the product is $100. Let's say you are going to order food from some restaurant. When you go to the restaurant, price of the product is $100. The same product is available on the online to buy $100. What Uber does? Simple, right? Uber will collect $100 from the customer. Uber will pay the restaurant only $70, which means they will keep a commission of 25% to 30%. Uber will keep a commission of 25 to 30%. And after that only Uber will be paying money to the restaurant. So Uber will make 25 to 30% there. And when the food is delivered, of course Uber will charge a delivery fee as well. Of course Uber will charge a delivery fee as well. So that's what the Uber business model is. So they don't make money only from your delivery fee. I mean, then they will lose a lot of money because delivery fee is nominal. Delivery fee is nominal. So they are not making money from the delivery fee. But they keep a 25% to 30% margin from the restaurants whenever, whenever they buy the food. Now the restaurant guys also, they are happy with it. Those who are running the restaurants, they are happy with it. Why? Let's say they are the restaurant. The seating capacity is 30 people. Seating capacity is 30 people. But the kitchen capacity is 40. Seating capacity is 30 people. Kitchen capacity is 40. What do you mean kitchen capacity is 40? In the kitchen, they can cook for 40 people. But the seats available only for 30. <coughs> so the restaurants will look at, okay, I can only get 30 people into my restaurant give them food but I can cook for 40 people because my kitchen is there so the balance then they are thinking why don't I sell it to Uber let Uber buy it from us and deliver let Uber buy it from us and deliver let Uber buy it from us and deliver uh, I will give them a 30% discount because my seating capacity is not consumed my seating capacity is not consumed whatever that I get from selling my food for 10 people to Uber, whatever I sell through Uber, is just additional money that I get. Is that is just that additional money that I get. So what happens is the restaurants are also happy about it. Restaurants are also happy about it. Uber is very happy because they charge 30% from the restaurant. So they get that money as a profit. Of course, they charge some money for the delivery but that might not be good enough to pay for the delivery guys so therefore they 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 might even have a small loss but they are fine with it so that is the business model of uber <coughs> that's the business model of uber right uh, any now we are not uber we are not uber we are different we are a company called snack wheel we are not uber so far, what I explained is the Uber business model. But our business model is very, very similar. Our business model is very, very similar. Only big difference is 
only big difference is we are doing the catering for we are doing the we are doing the we are doing the catering for only five different restaurants in the country we are doing the catering for only five different restaurants in the country we are not delivering for hundreds and hundreds of restaurants we are delivering only five restaurants in the country we are delivering only five restaurants in the country we deliver we deliver we deliver the food from taste burger we deliver the food from taste burger you know what taste burger is taste burger is a burger guy burger restaurant we deliver food for them okay we deliver food from steam pizza we deliver food from steam pizza we deliver food from bagetto is the largest sandwich chain in the country we deliver food from last chicken there's a chicken guy we deliver food from bonigans that sell sweets and savory products bakery shop that's a bakery those are the five restaurants that we deliver food from <coughs> those are the five restaurants that we deliver food from unlike uber we don't have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of restaurants that we deliver food from only five guys we are delivering food from so that's the biggest difference between ourselves and uber now this is the basic business model of ours that is basic business model of ours okay any questions please type your questions now please type your questions now any questions any questions anything to ask about uber business model anything to ask about uber business model <clears throat> anything to ask about uber business model so that's how the business goes on that's how the business goes on so like uber we also take about 30% like uber we also take about 30% so we also keep about 30% margin within us we keep 30% margin restaurants we are paying restaurants we are paying 30% less so restaurants are getting only their variable cost covered restaurants are getting only their variable cost covered right but there are other ways uber makes money we also use that there are other ways there are other ways uber makes money right so now what is my largest operational cost of course i need to pay restaurants that's a different issue i need to pay restaurants but what is my largest operational cost my largest operational cost is the cost of distributing the food my largest operational cost is cost of distributing the food because i will have to have so many drivers working for me i'll have to pay their salaries give their benefit keep the drivers with them and maintain their vehicles when the vehicles are broken i need to attend to it the biggest cost is to manage these drivers who are distributing who are distributing the food what all these guys in the world food delivery companies what do they do is what do they do is 
they don't recruit their own drivers they outsource the transportation business entirely they outsource the transportation business entirely to the freelance drivers to the freelance drivers they outsource it entirely they outsource it entirely so now like now you have a uber app from uber you order food you have a uber app and from that you can order the food the drivers also have app the drivers also have app so let's say you are a driver registered with uber you are not a full time employee of uber you are not a full time employee of uber you are only a freelance guy you don't get paid a salary you get paid for each delivery <clears throat> whenever you do a delivery you get paid whenever you do a delivery you get paid that's all but how it works you wake up in the morning at 8 o'clock you wake up in the morning at 8 o'clock you are the driver uh, you look at the weather condition you look at what is happening at house you feel like uh, i should do some deliveries for about 2 hours i should do some deliveries then i should go and play some cricket for 2 hours you are willing to do some deliveries what you should do <coughs> you should go to you should take your phone go to your app when i say app the drivers app so uber has a separate drivers app uber has a separate drivers app so you go to uber drivers app it's under your name you go and you go and click available you make yourself available because it is switched off usually whenever you go and make yourself available that means what you are available for the distribution of the food you are available for you, for the services whenever you click available what happens ah at the uber office on the screen they can see another button clicking now they can see another bulb clicking now that's you that driver is already available now so uber system will know where you are simple why your app is on your geo, geo, geo tagging is on since the geo tagging is geographical location is on since the geo tagging is on they will know where you are and then whenever there is a delivery to be done you will also get order acceptance into you <clears throat> so you get acceptance would you like to deliver this order you look at the location click yes when you click yes then the app will give the order for you the app will inform the customer that the the driver's number who is going to deliver so you are on the job now so you go to the restaurant uber will know that you are on the way to the restaurant the customer will also know that you are on the way to the restaurant customer also knows that you are on the way to the restaurant the business partner the restaurant they will also know which driver is coming for which food <clears throat> the business partners are given a tablet the business partners are given a tablet why so they got to know what food to cook so there there may be many line items coming in <clears throat> many light items coming in three fish sandwiches two egg sandwiches one salad two omelet so they need to do the cooking so therefore there is a screen given by us by uber by snack wheel so there they see the order when the order is ready they need to say ready whenever they say order is ready driver get a message saying that order is ready customer will get a message saying that order is ready uber office will get a message saying that order is ready so then the driver will come after you hand over the order whenever driver say yes i got the order the restaurant will bill to us because i have i have handed over the order as the restaurant when i have handed over the order i can invoice now uber i am not going to invoice the customer i am the restaurant did i confuse you <coughs> did i confuse you i am the restaurant i am going to invoice uber so when i hand over when the driver say yes yes i got the goods the invoicing will happen from the system the system will show the invoice system will sequence number invoice will be shown 
So restaurant will say happily order delivered, order delivered, order delivered. At the end of the month, at the end of the month, restaurant guy can go to their tab and say, oh, how many orders did I deliver in the last one month? And when you get paid, you get paid and you get tick. Each invoice you get tick as money received. You will get the money a little later. <coughs> you will get the money a little later. Right? So this is how the systems of systems are working. The drivers are freelance guys, not the full-time drivers. Some guys will keep about 10% of the drivers full-time. Some companies will keep about 10% of the drivers full-time, 90% freelance. There's one company, the CEO will come and do a presentation for you. 100% drivers, 100% drivers freelance. Not a single driver on their own. Not a single driver on their own. 100% drivers freelance. They are running the model very well. So what I was saying so far, did you get it? I said, we have two problems to resolve. <coughs> One of the biggest cost is the transportation cost. We manage the transportation cost beautifully by not managing it. We manage the transportation cost beautifully by not managing it. What does that mean? We don't manage it. We give other guys to do the transportation. So when the motorbike is broken, we don't care. That is the driver's problem. Driver is not in our payroll. Of course, we take some drivers full-time as well because sometimes the other drivers not available. You can put the full-time drivers. Otherwise, it's entirely outsource model. So each driver who are coming to your house to deliver food, they are not employees of Uber. They just get paid for each delivery. They just get paid for each delivery. So that is how the business model works. That's how the business model works. But don't forget, at the end of the month, Uber has so much details about you. Uber has so much of details about you at the end of the month. Now, Uber has so much of details about the about you, the customers. Uber knows what do you eat. Uber knows what do you eat. Uber can take a summary of what food that you order. Uber knows where you have been eating. Sometimes you order food to house. Sometimes you order food to office. Sometimes you order food at your friend's place. Uber knows where you are. And Uber knows how many people that you are with. You are ordering 10 pizzas from an unknown address. Not your office address, not your house address. The new location you are ordering food. You are ordering 10 pizzas. Uber knows very clearly you are not alone. Uber knows very clearly you are not alone. So all the details are with Uber. And at the end of the month, Uber can call the restaurants and say, right, imagine the call now. Huh? Uber will call the restaurants and say, uh, my dear restaurant, I'm calling from Uber. Uh, so restaurant guy will say, ah, okay, how are you? The Uber will say, you are, you are delaying the food preparation. Your food preparation is slow. Your food preparation is slow. Then the restaurant will say, no, why you are complaining like that? The Uber will say, <coughs> Uber will have so much of information to be given. Uber will say, Last month, your average food preparation time is 34 minutes. Average food preparation time of your restaurant is 34 minutes. The other restaurant average is 29 minutes. You are 5 minutes slow. In your restaurant, chicken pizzas, food preparation time is the highest. 41 minutes, not acceptable. Your prone pizzas, you cook them so fast, 19 minutes. How did you do it? Uber has so much of details. The Uber knows when the order is placed by the customer, number one event. Uber knows when the order is accepted by the restaurant, number two. When the, when the order is accepted by the restaurants, then Uber knows when the food was ready. Uber will check the gap between these two. When the order accepted by the restaurant and when the food is ready. 
Uber will check the gap between these two and Uber will monitor whether restaurants are delaying the food preparation or whether restaurants are not delaying the food preparation. Now, if Uber realized that one restaurant is delaying the food preparation all the time, if Uber realized that food preparation is always delayed, the first thing Uber will do is Uber will give an automatic message to the customer whenever they order food from that restaurant. So whenever you try to go to, whenever as a customer you try to go to that restaurant, Uber will give an automatic message. The food preparation will take in average 45 minutes. So there's a message given for the customer. Who is giving it Uber? Are they doing it manually? No, 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 no. System will give that message automatically. <coughs> Artificial intelligence is used and they will give a message automatically. They'll give a message automatically. Right? They'll give a message automatically. Right? So all those are happening. And if you are delaying the food delivery all the time, what Uber can do is, let's take as an, let's take as an example, we are taking food from KFC. There are 35 KFCs in our country, as an example. 35 KFCs in our country. One KFC always, always, always delay the food. We have spoken to KFC, they are not taking it serious. No point of telling them. That KFC is always <coughs> delaying the food. What Uber will do? Uber will switch off, switch off that particular restaurant. That means a customer who tried to go to the app will not see that restaurant. You can't order for that restaurant. Chapter close. The Uber will remove that restaurant from the from being visible for the customer. You are removed from the you are you are you can't be seen for the customer. Customer can't order from you. The Uber will say we can't take the blame. Close it. Off. Make that restaurant off from the system so customers can't see. So customers can't see. So customers can't see. That's the game that they can play easily. That's the game that they can play pay easily. Sometimes, I don't know whether you have seen, right? Sometimes you go to the Uber app, you will be shown some restaurants and when you go to the same map at a different time, you can't see that restaurant. Why? Either your location has changed, now you are in a different location. That particular restaurant was closer to your location number one, earlier location. Therefore, that was shown. Now you are a little far away. So Uber is thinking no point of showing this restaurant. It's far away. Food delivery take more than one hour. No point of showing that restaurant. Customer will not be happy. So Uber will see where you are. Show the restaurant close to you only. Show the restaurant close to you only. Not that Uber is doing, not that anyone is doing it manually. The system will take care of that all the time. System will take care of that all the time. At the end of the month, Uber will call the driver and say, my dear driver, I'm not saying they're actually calling, but they can. Your driving speed is slowest on the planet. You drive so slow. We don't want you. Because Uber is measuring the time the order was given to the driver. What's the distance from that to the restaurant? How many minutes it has taken? When the food was handed over from the restaurant to go to the customer's house, what's the distance? How many minutes taken? That will be monitored continuously as well. That will be monitored continuously. So this is really, really, really an amazing business. <clears throat> this is really, really an amazing business. Okay. Do you know sometimes there are not enough drivers so food cannot be delivered? You know that, right? Not enough drivers, so food cannot be delivered. Not enough drivers. Food cannot be delivered. The restaurants are there. They can make the food, but not enough drivers to deliver the food. Therefore, capacity planning is a critical item available for companies like Uber. Capacity planning is a, absolutely a critical item available for companies like Uber. We plan Tomorrow evening, 
how many orders we will get for 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. <coughs> 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. How many orders we will get? Our system will give me an estimated number. Tomorrow, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. How many orders we will get? There will be estimated assumption that is given to us. System will look at our uh, tomorrow is Sunday. 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. Last five years on every Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. What is the order quantity that we got? Last five years. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Monday is a public holiday. So when Monday is a public holiday on that Sunday, 4 to 5 p.m. System will look at when Mon next day was a holiday, whether that number goes up, comes down. Tomorrow it's going to be a rainy day. We Google and see rainy day. Uh, in the rainy days in the last five years on Sundays, when next day is a poor day, next, when next day is a holiday, whether order quantity has gone up, order quantity has come down. All those capacity planning is done by the system itself. So that is the business model of Uber. And I have a very similar business model for <coughs> snack wheel. And only difference is we deliver food only from five restaurants and all those five restaurants are fast food. All those five restaurants are fast food. Pizzas, chicken, uh, pastry items, right? All those five restaurants are fast food restaurants. So that is the one of the biggest difference available. Burgers, we deliver only the fast food. We deliver fast food from only five restaurants. We don't deliver pizzas of anyone. No, 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 no. We don't deliver burgers of any restaurant. We deliver burgers of taste burger only. That's the business model of ours. Any questions? <coughs> Are you clear about the business model? Any questions? Any questions? Are you sure? Anyone is, everyone is saying no questions. Are you sure? You are not sure. <clears throat> so this is our business model. Now, first of all, any questions? Any questions? Others? Okay, there's one question which I should answer now. So, Kamran Javad has given a question, right? Now, this is what the question is, how do you manage the capacity planning if future orders are high? Now, this is what we do, right? Capacity planning will happen from two different sides. Capacity planning will happen from two different sides. First, the system will give me how many orders I do I have for next two weeks or next one month <coughs> or next three months hourly basis I will get an estimate hourly basis I will get an estimate the drivers are also supposed to give me an estimate of their availability for the future drivers are also supposed to give an estimate about their availability for the future <coughs> so drivers needs to get involved in the overall process of the plan drivers should tell our uh, next week next one month when do i think that i will be available drivers needs to say that drivers needs to say that drivers needs to say that as well if we have so much of orders not enough drivers so much of orders not enough drivers Number one that I do is not 
not we do it manually. System will do it by itself. <coughs> system will do it by itself. What happens is, system will look at who are the drivers who are inactive for that weekend. Tomorrow, let's say, system will see this area. Generally, there are 100 drivers. Tomorrow, there are only 80. Why not? There will be a message that will go for other drivers, encouraging them to come. Encouraging them to come. So there will be a message. Tomorrow, 3 to 5 p.m., we'll have a lot of orders, but will you be able to drive on our behalf? There will be some incentive that is given for the drivers to log in. What is the game of the drivers? Game of the drivers is how many deliveries are given for each hour. That's the game of the drivers. <coughs> if I am getting more deliveries for each hour, I'll make more money. If I am getting less deliveries for each hour, I'll be making less money. So therefore, they will try to see more orders for every hour. And if I get a message saying that there's a high demand for tomorrow, three to five, I will like to come. Because I know when I deliver one, I'll get one more. When I deliver second one, I'll get the third one. So driver know that he can make more money. So drivers would like to come. That is something that they will do. Other than that, what they will do is, uh, they will sometimes arrange their permanent drivers to look after that particular area as well. So those are the things that we can basically do. Those are the things that we can basically do, Cameron, right? What will be the, what will be included in driver's payment? Driver's payment is a fixed payment that we agree. On each delivery, fixed payment that is agreed. Right. Now, this is the introduction that I have done. We are going to do the strategic level case study. If you want to be successful in the strategic level case study, you need to start thinking like the CEO of the company. If you started to think like the CEO of the company, <coughs> <laughs> if you started to think like the CEO of the company, if you started to think like the CEO of the company, you can pass the strategic level case study easily. You can pass the strategic level case study easily. So shall we do the thinking now? Shall we do the thinking now? Uh, shall we do the thinking now? So shall we ask things like, how can I make more money? How can I make more money, more money, and more money? So you need to ask that question to yourself. You need to find a way to make more money or double your profits. How can I double your profits? Okay. So if someone ordered two burgers, if someone order two burgers, customer number one is ordering two burgers. Customer number two is ordering five pizzas and four burgers. Customer number one is ordering two burgers. Customer number two is ordering five pizzas and four burgers. Oh, wow. That means... The second customer average order size is large. Second customer average order size is large. My delivery fee will be for each delivery. So I'm not going to pay, I'm not going to pay more money just because the order quantity or order size is large. I'm not going to pay more money. <laughs> I'm not going to pay more money. Therefore, Therefore, when the order size is large, I am going to pay the same delivery fee. But when the order size is large, I will get 30% of that large fee, which means I will be making more money from the guys who are ordering large orders. So how can I incentivize them? How can I incentivize them? I will follow them one by one. Ah, this guy, every Sunday he order five pizzas. 
There are five people at his house. Every Sunday he owed. This Sunday he did not owe. Oh my gosh, what has happened to him? Is he dead? Is he dead? If he's dead, why don't we send four pizzas? Other people will eat, no? So what I'm, I'm not serious, right? What I'm trying to say, if, if he's not ordering pizzas this time, maybe you need to send a nice message. Hi, your favorite pizza is available. And use this coupon, $10 coupon. <laughs> if, you're, if you're repeating your order, please get, get this $10 coupon. You do something. You do something. So you, you try to ensure those customers are monitored and followed up individually and you give them a reason for them to order again and again and again. So how can we do that? So that's one of the ways where we can make money. So let me give you a brief now. Strategic level case study is not about theory knowledge. Strategic level case study is very much your practical, common sense, practical business knowledge. That is what the strategic level case study is all about. That is what the strategic level case study is all about. What I am going to discuss with you from next week, today is only an introduction. <clears throat> what I am going to discuss with you from next week, I do work as a CEO of a public listed company now. I am working as a CEO of a public listed company. I am trying to share my experience related to this case study with you. That's all what I am going to do. The theories are not big. There are certain theories available. I will teach you separately. Don't worry about theory. I will do the teaching for E3, P3, F3. I will teach you E3, P3, F3. Don't worry about it. But <clears throat> for you to pass the paper, we should think like the CEO of the company. So I'll be sharing my experience throughout the journey as a CEO, the way we think as a CEO, the way that we have been trained to think. If you started to think like the same, without a doubt, you will be able to get a very, very high mark. You will be able to get a very, very high mark. That is what the strategic level case study is all about. I am on the SEMA Global Council. I am on the SEMA Global Council. One of the critical things for SEMA at the Global Council is we are pushing SEMA or SEMA has decided we are not going to teach a lot of theories for the students. We just want to see whether they can resolve some practical business problems. If they can resolve some practical business problems, we will give them the full marks. We will we'll pass them the exams. That's the attitude at SEMA we have taken. That's the journey that we are trying to go with you. So when we try to work together from next week, our step number one is called KYP. Our step number two is called KYI. You need to learn about the industry as well. You need to learn about the industry as well. You need to learn about the industry. Otherwise, you will not be able to. Otherwise, you will not be able to learn the company very well. <coughs> Unless you know the industry, you will not know about the company very well. Therefore, learning about the industry is also <coughs> absolutely critical. That is why we have what we call KYI. That is why we have what we call KYI. And I will encourage you to go through the KYI as well. And I am sure you will be to learn lot by looking at the KYI. We don't want you to memorize the KYI, not required. We don't want you to memorize the KYI. We just want you to learn the basics given in the KYI. What level of income people will order the food online, right, in the world? 
market sizes in the world of the US food delivery apps, right? So much of details that is given in the KYA. This is about UK. This is about UK. This is about the examples that is available, like Uber Eats, right? Like Uber Eats, like Somato, like DoDash. So there are so many companies available in the world. So many companies available in the world who are doing who are doing it. So when you go through the KYI, you will be able to realize a lot of those details. Now, Snackwheel is your case study company. We are given a comparison with the Uber Eats as well. Then <clears throat> you will be able to learn how the industry works. Right? So I'm just trying to show you some headings. I will not go through, but then KYI is also a document that you should try to go through. KYI is also a document that you should try to go through. So that's the starting point of our journey. Right? Can I summarize? We have 10 different steps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 10 different steps available. The first step is KYP, second step is KYI. There are all together 10 steps available. <coughs> Third one is called deep dive. Third one is called deep dive. Third one is called deep dive. <coughs> that is in-depth analysis of the pre -seed. We go to the depth of the pre-seed, right? Stage number four is called ground rules. Ground rules means what are the basic ground level rules that you need to follow on the exam day. As an example, it's an online exam. You can't carry pen and paper. Everything you need to type it to the computer. The question paper will appear on the screen. There will be three different sections on the exam day. First section for one hour, second section for one hour, third section for one hour. Three hours, three sections. First section will come as an email from your boss. You got to read the email. Then there is something called reference material, which is like an attachment to the email. Which is like an attachment to the email. You read the attachment, you read the email. That's the exam paper that you get. You reply to the email. Your reply is the answer. You have one hour to do that. <clears throat> when the one hour is gone, email will go automatically. You don't need to send. You are typing the email, one hour is gone, email will go automatically. But there is a watch available which tells you time. Re remaining time. It will start 60 minutes. 59, 58, 57. 15, 14, 13, 12. So you know how many minutes left. When the one hour is gone, it will go automatically. If you finish answering before one hour, and if you decide to close the section number one after 40 minutes, without using entire 60 minutes, after 40 minutes, without using entire 60 minutes, the balance 20 minutes, you will never be able to use it again. You can't take that 20 minutes to the next section. You can't. You can't come back to this section and use the balance 20 minutes. You can't. So therefore, those are what we call <coughs> ground rules. Stage number five is called co-activities. That is because there are five co-activities available. Stage number six is called refresh theory. Don't worry. That is... E3, P3, F3, Refresh Theory. I'll be covering that fully for you. You don't need to go and read any notes. I will do that for you. Section number seven is the most important section. Practice. Section number seven and eight are the most important sections. Section number eight is the reality. Section number seven is mock number one, question paper and answer for you to get a feel about what kind of questions will come. Section number eight is about 
you do mocks on our exam engine. Mock number two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Do as many as possible mocks <coughs> on our exam engine. We will mark them, give you the feedback. Then you can log into our LMS, watch the video about that mock paper. So you will see what mistakes you have done and how to improve them. What are the areas you have done very well? How to maintain that? All that is available in the reality section. Reality section. Mock number, section number nine is a package that includes a lot of things. That includes PI. PI means what? Possible issues. Power mock. A lot of things are included. Section number 10 is called revision and one-to-one -one support where we will support you individually to pass the paper. <coughs> we will do individual chats with you, one-on-one one -on -one chats with you to ensure you get a chance to pass. So this is our course. This is our course. It has 10 different steps. We are starting with the KYP, KYI. There are all together 10 different steps available. Today is only an introduction. But, but, let me say something very critical and then we'll take a break. We'll take a break for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll meet again, right? Let me tell you something very critical. Your typing speed matters. Your typing speed matters. Your typing speed matters. So I got to know what your WPM is. <coughs> Therefore, I got to know what your WPM is. What do you mean by typing speed matters? I mean, some people type 20 words for each minute. Some people type 20 words for each minute. 20 words per each minute. Some people type 30 words for each minute. If you can type 30 words for each minute, that means you are typing 10 words more than the other guy. For each minute. Each minute 10 words more. On the exam day, how many hours are there? 3 hours. That means how many minutes in total? 180 minutes are there on the exam day in total. Out of that 180 minutes, generally you type for how many minutes? About 100 minutes. <coughs> About 100 minutes you are typing. Balance 80 what you are doing. You are reading the question paper. You are thinking what the answer is. About 100 minutes you type. If you can type 10 words for each minute, then your other person, you can type 1000 words more for the entire paper because 100 minutes you are typing. 1000 words more means more examples, more explanation, adding more clarity to your answer, making your answers nice, making your answers better, adding a little bit more points, explaining the point. So typing speed can give you a big advantage for your final score. That is why we need to know what your WPM is. WPM is words per minute. <laughs> WPM is words per minute. Homework number one for the next week. Homework number one for the next week. Homework number one for the next week. Please type 20 minutes a day for four days and calculate your WPM. Please type 20 minutes a day for 4 days. Please calculate WPM for every day and the average WPM. Can you write it down? Homework for next week. Can you write it down? Homework for next week, number 1. Type 20 minutes every day for 4 days. <coughs> in, dust, in next week, calculate your WPM for every day and the average. What are you going to type? You are going to type something that you know. You are not going to think and type. No, no, no. Think in time, eliminate. Type something that you know. Example, type the pre-scene. So you learn the pre-scene as well. That's the homework number one that I wanted to give you for next week. So this is my first one hour chat with you. This is my first one hour chat with you. Right? Uh, we will take a break. We'll meet again. But before that, any questions from what I said so far? 
<clears throat> any questions from what I said so far? Today's introductory session will go slow. Today's introductory session will go slow. So now, uh, how do we recognize revenue? So I'm sure this question is being asked because when the customer pay me 100, 70 will go to the restaurant. So what we do is we recognize 100 as the revenue that we get. Cost of sales <coughs> will include the 70 that I am paying. All right. So I'll recognize the full amount that I collect from the customer. Okay. So can I give you five minutes to ask questions? <coughs> and then, so today is an introductory session. I'm not very serious about doing a lot of work. So I want to take a good break. After the break, we'll do another session for about 40 minutes and we'll finish. Right. So before I stop, <coughs> I have five more minutes available, four more minutes available. I'm going to finish. I'm going to teach only for one hour, then give you a break. Otherwise, you would not be very, very happy. One hour and a break. Some people like the break part more than the one hour teaching. Some people enjoy the break of 20 minutes much better than the one hour teaching. Therefore, we should take a break. But since I have three more minutes, any more questions of what I did? Any more comments of what I did? Is everything clear? Is everything clear? Are you ready to rock and roll? Are we ready to go ahead and do the game? Are we ready to go ahead and have a fight? Are we ready for the war? Is everything clear? Is everything clear? The fun in online education is when you respond. So please do respond. Is everything clear? Okay. Looks like a lot of things are very clear. Uh, there's only one question, so let me answer that question. What is the word count that we need? Well, if you type about 20 words, 22 words a minute, 23 words a minute, I think good enough. <laughs> if you type about 23 words a minute, that is good enough. What do you mean by that? For one section, you have 60 minutes. For a one section, you have 60 minutes. For a one section, you have 60 minutes. Now, out of 60 minutes, you take about 8 minutes to read the unseen, maybe another 15 minutes to type the answer. Maybe another 15 minutes to think about the answer. I'm sorry. 8 minutes to read the unseen. You are doing three things on the exam day. Reading, thinking, typing. Are we in agreement? You are doing three things on the exam day. Reading, thinking, typing. Reading is about 8 minutes. Thinking is about 15 minutes. So how many minutes left to type? <coughs> Reading is 8 minutes, thinking is 15 minutes. So how many minutes is available for you to type? Everyone, how many minutes available for you to type? No one knows? One section is for one hour, 60 minutes. So how many minutes available for you to type? And each minute we type about 22 words. So you should get about 800 words per section. 800 words per section, which is about 2,400 for the entire paper. That is what is needed. So, so you need 8 minutes to read, 15 minutes to think, 23 minutes are gone, which means you have 37 minutes to type. 37 into 22 is <coughs> 840. 840. So you type about 800 words a section, that will be good enough. 800 words a section, that will be good enough. Right? That's the word count. That's the word, that's the word, approximate word count. Since Heshan asked me about the approximate word count, I gave an approximate number. So 2300 words, if you type, good enough to pass. Good enough to pass. But when you tell me your word count next week, we will do some exercises to ensure you type faster. When you tell me of your word count tomorrow, we'll do some exercises tomorrow, next week. Exercise number one, homework number one, please do it and come. I've taken my one hour now. Uh, I've taken my one hour. So this is the basic details about the organization. Name of the company is Snackwheel. It's a quoted company. Uh, always strategic level case study is a quoted company. 
uh, I work as a CEO of a quoted company. Therefore, my experience is going to be very much relevant here because it's a quoted company that I give the leadership to. Uh, therefore, things will be very much related. So how we will see. And there are risks available in the quoted company or reputation and all that are very critical. Uh, the food delivery is what we do. Home delivery of fast food. Over 3,000 employees, 23,000 independent contractors. 23,000 independent contractors. They are the drivers, freelance drivers. Those who are not full-time employees of ours. Right. So then we have our basic operations. Of course, our board is very interesting board because we have a CEO. Then we have a C chief operator, C double O, CFO, marketing head, marketing director. Then we continue to have a chief information officer. Then we have non-executive chairman and three independent non-executive directors and three independent non-executive directors. Our mission is very interesting mission. Snack Tail mission is to enable consumers to buy West Russia's best fast food without leaving their homes or workplace. Be wherever you are, we will help you to buy the best fast food in the country. That is what we do. So I want you to go through the KYP. The one question that comes to your mind all the time, one question should come to your mind all the time is, what kind of a company are we? Are we a distribution company? Or are we an IT company? Are we a distribution company? Are we an IT? Are we a distribution company? Are we an IT company? Or are we a food company? I mean, if you are a food company, what we should do now? If you are a food company, you should now start your own restaurants. If you are a food company, we should start our own restaurants now. Our own restaurants. Our own restaurants. Instead of distributing food from other people, why don't we do the food and distribute? Why don't we do the food and distribute? That is provided you are a food company. You are going to define ourselves as a food company, then why don't you open your own restaurant? Why don't you why don't you open your own restaurant? Uh, like look at Netflix. What kind of a company Netflix is? They were IT company, we said before. They were IT company, we said. They get movies from other production companies. They get movies from other production companies and make them available for you to watch. Make them available for you to watch. But now they, not now, many years, they do movies for themselves. <coughs> they do movies for themselves. Earlier, they got movies from someone else and load it to their source to a generator. I say I changed the power source to a generator. So therefore, there was a trouble, right? Uh, sorry for that. Now, look at Netflix. Earlier, they were showing movies of other people. Now, they have their own movies. What do you call them? In Netflix, their own movies are called what? Yeah. So, in Netflix, their own movies are called what? Yeah. I am back. I hope you can see me and hear me now. I hope you can see me and hear me now. So in Netflix, sometimes they do their own movies. What do we call them? In the Netflix world, what do we call them? If you go to Netflix, Netflix, what do we call their own movies? I think they call it Netflix originals. Netflix originals are the movies, are the movies made by Netflix for Netflix. So likewise, why should we not open our own restaurants? Why should I not open our own restaurants? So, so far we have been distributing food for other people. But if you have such a good database of the people who would like to order food online, why don't we make the food and distribute it online? 
So that is provided you think that you are a food company. If you think you are a distribution company, then what shall we do? If you think you are a distribution company, then what shall we do? If you think you are a distribution company, why don't you distribute anything else? Why don't you distribute documents for other companies? Why don't you distribute papers for other companies? Why don't you distribute groceries for other companies? Why don't you deliver? I mean, you there is no reason for you to deliver only food if you are a distribution company. You understand my logic? What matters is how you should look at ourselves. <coughs> what matters is how we should look at ourselves. Right? So we need to decide that. Because on the exam day, things are not very difficult. On the exam day, we know with our experience, what are the broader areas that will be questions. We are aware what are the broader areas that will be questioned. We just want to ensure you and me together, we work together to see how to manage those broader areas. That is why we'll give you about nine mock papers and that will cover everything that you would like to see, everything that is likely to be seen on the exam day, everything will be covered by us. Everything will be covered by us. Right? However, we need to work together. What do you mean by we need to work together? Communication has to be very, very strong, which means you need to use our learning management system learning management system very effectively. You need to use our learning management system very effectively. If you miss a lecture, don't worry. It will be a recorded version is available online for you to go and watch. If you miss a lecture, don't worry. The recorded version is available for you to go and watch. Right? All the mock papers, KYP, KYI, all the documents is also available in the LMS. You will get the access to the LMS, then you can kind of go and learn from them. We are going to have a WhatsApp group. Please, please, please be active in the WhatsApp group. Ask questions, upload videos, upload articles, clarify things. Please make it active. You and me being in touch is absolutely critical. You and me being in touch is absolutely critical. Right? I want your contribution. I want your help. Allocating about one and a half hours of work every day. One and a half hours of work every day towards the end, towards the end of the week. In the weekend, weekend we want you to do more hours of work, maybe four or five hours of work in the weekend. We are going to do it only for six weeks, not for the entire six months. This is just one and a half months. I am sure you are willing to sacrifice weekends of yours just for six weeks so you can be proudly say you are SEMA qualified. So you can be proudly say you are SEMA qualified. So you can proudly say you are SEMA qualified. So I want that help from you. I want that help from you. To push you to do that help for me and for yourself, we will have a timetable agreed. We'll have a timetable agreed. We'll go through, we'll agree a timetable on daily basis. For a one week, we'll agree the timetable. Uh, sometimes we do agree the timetable for two weeks. But once we agree the timetable in the session, I want you to follow the timetable somehow because it's important for you to follow that timetable because, <coughs> because then it becomes much easier for me to help you. So once we agree a timetable, I want timetable is my way of pushing you to do one and a half hours of work every day and a little bit more work during the weekend. I know all of you all are working professionals. So therefore we should have a mechanism to support you. I will not send you documents for you to read for 
five hours. No, you don't need to spend time like that. Everything is summarized. Everything is explained in the session. And I'm sure you would understand. I'm sure you would understand. So you don't need to spend hours and hours and hours. But small work that I give you, you should please, please, please find time to do. Just for six weeks. Just for six weeks. This is an exam paper. Seema will select the best students of the world. <laughs> Seema will select the best student of the world. Best in the world. I don't think you will get many opportunities to be best in the world. I don't think you will get many opportunities to be the best in the world. Even if you do MBA, PhD, they will never select best in the world. This might be your last chance in your entire life to be best in the world unless you are planning to go for Olympics or something which is unlikely. So why don't we give it a try? Why don't we give it a try to be the best in the world? And it will be a superb achievement if you can. I am here to help you, provided you are willing to commit yourself, provided you have the right attitude to say, let me give it a try. And if you achieve that, it will be a superb way to thank your parents who spend money on you, thank your partners who spend hours on you, tolerating you whilst you do the exam. It will be a great way to say thank you very much. I'm sure all your parents would love to hear that news, that your son and daughter is the best in the world. They might not believe it initially, but when they realize it's true, they will be really, really be happy. So I want you to give it a try. <clears throat> I want you to give it a try. I want you to give it a try. I want you to have the attitude and give it a try. Right? So we should, we should start the official work from the next week. However, we should start some work during the week. What you need to do is to go through the KYP slides one by one just to understand. But the game is not in theory. Game is in very practical knowledge that we need to show to the examiner on the exam day. So therefore, how practically you look at the situation, that is what <coughs> I will do in my sessions mostly. I'm not going to teach you a lot of theories. I'm going to give you that practical common sense element of it. That's what we need. I want that practical common sense element of it. That's exactly what we need. That's exactly what we need. Okay. Questions? Before I end the session, any questions? Any questions related to anything? Surgical level case study, SEMA, what we did today, our program, Nanaska, any questions? <coughs> so I hope you'll have questions now. So we'll quickly go through the questions. Any questions? Any comments? Any questions? Any questions? Please type. No questions. Well, superb news. <laughs> uh, will we be notified once the LMS access is given? I think just after your registration during the week, you should get the access. Yes, you will get an email when the access is given. Then you can start with the KYP and KYI. Okay. Other questions, please. Others, please do ask questions. Others, please do ask questions. Uh, next is... Uh, Uh, when is the next session? Do we get timetable? Yes, next session is next Sunday, same time. I might have a little issue next Sunday. I'm going to be in Germany. I mean, next Saturday, next Saturday, I'm going to be in Germany. But let's see, we will advise you prior whether if there are any changes. If there are any changes, we'll advise you. 
should you read lot about industry no you don't uh, you don't need to read lot about industry but if you go through the kyi document will be good enough but i will have a industry ceo come in and explain it to you uh, about how the industry works i have studied the industry a lot i have been going through it three different food delivery companies in three different countries so i know what is happening so i'll brief you i'll do the sessions on the industry uh, ali my other lecturer will do some sessions on the industry the ceo of a real world company very successful food delivery company will come and talk to you he will give you an update about it uh, i will share my learning so you don't need to read a lot we will take that part from you and help you there okay any more questions any more questions so i think my mobile number is there are i was told there are some who had not registered please do it right away please do it right away send an e email to info at nanaskar.com and do the registration right away now itself finish it my mobile number is 0094773789896 send me a message uh, whatsapp message at any time if you want my help uh, i am here to help you with that so if no questions let's not waste time thank you very much thank you for joining we'll start the war from the next week please do register <laughs> during the week i'll send you some videos for you to watch after you added to after you register after you added to the whatsapp group it's a easy exam to pass it's just that we need to work together as long as we work together i am sure we will be able to pass this exam without